So, uh, hey, y'all, thanks for tuning in. Another exciting episode of Life on the Ave. This is episode 35. Uh, we got Toots who's going to take the lead here, um, and uh, Toots is going to intro our, our very, very special guest and dear friend yeah. of the group, of the pod. Absolutely. Of everything. So, Toots, take it over. Gee, we've been rolling um, with this Dell Liberties uh, this year, and um, one, you know, call it my mind, especially, you know, during this time of year, uh, a good friend of ours, uh, Mr. Trevor Cooney. Uh, former uh, Syracuse basketball player. Perfect timing for this pod. We got uh, March Madness rolling. Got the TV up front in the office. We got four games on right now. I've been hooked all day. Um, but yeah, man. Thanks for happy having me. Happy to have you on here. Excited yeah. to yeah, chat. Chat yeah. up. I, I, I've watched a couple episodes. Hell yeah. Follow you guys nice. on Instagram. So. Sweet. Yeah. yeah, happy to get the call. <laughs> I'm sure someone canceled, right? Someone no canceled. Geez. No, 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 no. We, you've been booked I for a while. Yeah, you have been yeah. booked. I reached out to you like booked. in January, <laughs> January, December. You've been booked. Even yeah. to have you on. Yeah. So Toots, give give him his flowers. Yeah, give him we'll his give flowers. flowers. So yeah. Quick background on our on our good friend here, um, Travis, six four guard from Syracuse University. Um, he grew up in Wilmington, Delaware. Attended the Sanford School. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Yeah, go ahead. You, you want to redo that? And now starting for your Syracuse arm from a six foot four guard from Wilmington, Delaware, Trevor Cooney. Is that what they did for you? Yeah, something like that. Nice. Where? Yeah. You have like a walk up, you have like a walk up handshake, like with like one of the guys at like the end of the like the aisle or whatnot. Yeah, but it wasn't cool. No, oh, no. I mean, I didn't what have you do? Cool ones. Um, I think I played rock, rock, paper, scissors one time. Um, <laughs> I would do stuff like that. It's yeah. all good. Well, let's give it to him. Yeah, hit, hit, hit him with the intro. Yes, we're good. Ready? Get back to it. Love it. Um, so yeah, like we were saying, he led uh, the Sanford Warriors to two hit state him championships. With the intro, Tom, a six foot four guard from where? You yeah. from Syracuse University? Yeah, yeah. You want me to get that? Yeah, get, get, do, do it in the voice. Yeah, I got let's hear that. it in the voice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a six four guard from Syracuse University, Mr. Trevor Cooney. <laughs> Did the place go wild for you? Sometimes. You had to be a fan dome. favorite, dude. You had to be a fan Especially favorite. Especially the dome. How was playing there? It was, it was awesome. Unbelievable. It was, it was It was. unlike anything else just because of the layout of it. Yeah. You can just fit so many people in there. Sweet. Sweet, sweet, sweet. sweet. Well, yeah, read, read the rest of that. Right, cool. Let's do it. That was a good intro. <laughs> awesome. Um, so, yeah, by the time Trev graduated from Sanford, um, he was the, all, the school's all-time leading scorer. While at Syracuse, Trev was a part of both the 2012-13 Final Four team as well as 2016. In his final three seasons, he started 102 consecutive games, and in his redshirt senior year, he became the first Syracuse player in the school history to play for two Final Four teams. At that time, he was averaging 12.7 points per game. Cooney scored 1,437 points in his college career, shot, I think, 37% from three-point range, and his 281 made three-pointer trails only, trails only Gary McNamara and, and Jerry, Andy. come on, man. Jerry, he's Sorry. a legend. Jerry McNam, Mac, is it McNamara? McNamara and Andy Routens. Routens. He's Canadian. And the school sorry. record books. Fire. <laughs> after college, Trevor spent some time uh, playing overseas in Spain and Germany in 2016. Um, after a few months abroad, Trevor was acquired by the Long Island Nets of the NBA Development League. Today, Trevor is a leasing agent with BPG, Bocini Poland Group, in Wilmington, Delaware. And before then, he worked at the new Chase Field, Chase Field House in Wilmington, where he was the director of courts for the facility. Cooney has also become an advocate for mental health awareness especially following the suicide of his friend, Sean Locke. He is a board member of the, of the Unlock the Life Foundation, which sponsors a basketball tournament in his honor every, every February. Property Again. manager. I don't really do much <laughs> but, yeah, I don't want. I don't want you to redo it. Love it. Should I read it all over again? <laughs> no. All good. Well, Trevor, welcome to the pod, dude. Yeah, su super excited to have you on. Um, first thing, I guess to to, to hop into it. Uh, you mentioned it, it was your girl's birthday. So what do what do we do for the lady? Yeah, uh, we went up to uh, Looks guess, fire on Instagram. Damn, I didn't see it. I didn't see it. Um, yeah. We went up to Tuna Bar in Philly. Nice. You guys, no, no, never heard of it city? either. Yeah, old city, old city, old Very city. Nice. Um, pretty, pretty cool spot. Um, really awesome menu. Um, nice. Got some sushi. Got some rice. Nice. It was, it was a nice night. That's awesome. Tuna bar. Would you go back? Give it a yes. good rest. Nice. Yes, I would definitely go back. Sushi's awesome. Yeah, Love it was sushi. a good spot. Love that. Awesome. I also uh, reading over that intro. I was a, an intern for, for Mr. Trevor Cooney. Uh, 
<laughs> Before I get my real estate license, I had a blast. We had a blast. Yeah, we, yeah we did. That's why when the Chase Fieldhouse opened, yeah. I was a senior in college, and I was like, damn, I need like 50 hours of like interns, like internship stuff for sports management. And I was like, yo, Brandon, you know, I, I need an internship. He's like, let me call Trevor. I'm like, Trevor Cooney? Like, you know him? <laughs> that was your Trevor Cooney moment? That was it. Two months awesome. later, we were just... Done yeah. deal. Done deal. Great talent. Yeah. Got your hours in. Got my hours in. Learned maybe a thing. Shoot half court shots yeah. during like lunch hours. <laughs> it was a blast. Did you ever meet Trev before that? <laughs> no, I don't think. Did we? I don't. I mean, probably. I don't know if we did. Maybe like one of the, like their, the the boys' Christmas parties or something. Yeah, had to. But um, yeah, I guess if we're talking about like our first intro to Trevor Cooney moments, <laughs> I I have two funny ones as well too. Yeah. Mine and Mary Kate's. Yeah. yeah. Yep. My first intro to to Trevor Cooney, uh, I played lacrosse at University of Delaware. Stopped playing my senior year. Started dating Mary Kate. Didn't really have like friends outside of the athletic world, so you know was figuring it out at the time. Charlie Mallon was dating a girl on the girls' uh, club basketball team, so I started hanging out with Charlie Mallon and Sean Carroll, and yeah. they invited me over to their apartment above CVS uh, or Walgreens, whatever it was on Main Street, yep. uh, to watch a Syracuse Orange game. So um, I was like, "Who? Who's Trevor Cooney?" And they're like, "He's he's the boy. <laughs> he's <laughs> the boy." There's my guy. By the night, I was like, "Hell yeah, this is great. <laughs> Let's go." Orange. Let's go oh, yeah. orange. Yeah. yeah. So that's funny. And then uh, my wife loves when I tell this story. Um, but her Trevor Cooney moment, uh, she played basketball at Ursuline. Mm -hmm. I guess there was like a play day, like her like senior year, maybe like your junior year or something. Um, and like all the girls were like, oh my God, like that's Trevor, like in like the <laughs> athletic room, like like oh, like, oh my God, go talk to him, go talk to him. No one's going to talk to him, right? And uh, so Mary Kate went in there. I guess she was getting her like ankles taped or whatever. And she was like, "Hey, Trevor, I'm Mary Kate. Like, what's up?" Like, <laughs> so do you remember that? Did that story remember? actually happen or what? Did that, yeah. It definitely happened. Nice. <laughs> but, Mary Kate was a stud in high school. She was. She was a great player. Yeah, she was a great player. Yeah. My she biggest thing. That. Yeah. My biggest thing, thing that I tell that. Mary about Mary Kate her basketball game. She's still ninety percent from the free throw line. Oh, yeah. It is unbelievable. Really. She's. Wet, great for you. Need line. that. Yeah. Yeah. Great for They're literally free that. points. Yeah, yeah. Is what free she points. tells people. Yeah, that's true. You can't miss them. They're free throws. Late in the game, crucial bucket, especially in the March Madness. Yeah. Well, I remember the first it. time Vince reached out to me. I was working at the field house. Okay. And we're hosting the Sixers blue white scrimmage, and oh, like yeah. everyone, like tickets went within yep. seconds, and everyone's like reaching out, like, "Hey, leave me tickets. Hey, can I get tickets? Can I get tickets?" I get this email from a Vince Garment being basically like, "Hey." Name's Vince. You can leave my tickets at will call. <laughs> and I was like, I remember I hit my buddies up. I'm like, does anyone know who this Vince Carmen is? I'm like, do I know him? Like, I'm like, we got some email. big I'm time like, guy coming on Saturday. <laughs> I'm like, I'm, do I know this guy? I'm like, I, and then later down the road, I meet you and we play golf together. Nice. And I'm like, I like this guy. Nice. But at first, I'm like. Like, so did, did you drop off tickets for him? Do they take no, I'm, like, <laughs> I'm like, hey Vince, uh, I, can't, I, I, can't, I can't help you, man. I, I don't have any tickets for anyone. Uh, I gotta look back. When was that? That would have been 2018, 2019. Okay, I got you. Shot your shot. Yeah, yeah. It was like that email. email. Right. It was just like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's see if I can find that. Leave, leave me a roll call. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but then, um, yeah, ballsy, yeah, yeah right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some, you, you, shoot or shoot. That's what I tell yeah. people. Shoot or shoot. Shooters got to shoot. Yeah, yeah. But then, uh, yeah, we played a couple rounds of golf together. Yeah. We connected. Let's see if I can <laughs> find this email because that's hilarious. Oh. But I do remember definitely sending you something. Yeah, yeah. I gotta find it. But uh, yeah, that's that's funny. Yeah, yeah. So where we want to take this? We we, we want to talk about basketball today. We want to hop into yeah, you man. know old school hoops, Trevor Cooney, wherever you want to take it. To let's let's yeah. hop into March. Let's do it let's right hop now. March, the best time of the year. Best time. This of the is year. what what B Toot says. Best two days of the year. He he takes off both days. Not Very sure if you cool. saw uh, his story yesterday with McDermott getting. Uh, I did see that. Getting, <laughs> it's unbelievable. I told him. I what said, did you say? Yeah. Dan McDermott, that's a face for radio. Yeah. <laughs> Facebook video. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Dan McDermott. We yeah. love you. Um, but yeah, this will be dropping on Monday. So what? First two days are Thursday, Friday. And then do they play again? Round of 32, Saturday, Sunday? Correct. Yes. Right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, right. March, what, so week? Monday will be and Sweet 16. 16. Yep. Monday, will be, Monday will be Sweet 16. All right. Cool. Uh, no. Next week. Thir it'll be Thursday or next weekend? It will be uh, Thursday of next week. So they, pay, they play Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday yep. this week. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday next week. Got it. Okay, and then what? Final four. And then and then final four, the following week. Hell yeah! 
best time of the year. Yeah, so when this is airing, that will uh, uh, we'll, we'll already be in the Sweet 16. So yeah, yeah, yeah had a couple upsets already. Yeah, yeah, none of my picks will be around. No. So. What uh, what seed were you guys? Did you make the tournament all four years? Um, so I guess what seed you were. Andy. So me, so freshman year we were a three. You were a three mm-hmm. or four? you were a ten seed in sixteen. No, yeah, that was my yeah. senior year. I remember that. So freshman year we were three or four. Yeah, we ended up making it to the final four, and then my sophomore year, that was the year where we were we were number one in the country for a while. Um, wow! And then we got a three seed again, and we ended up we lost in the first round to Dayton. I think Dayton was like a fourteen. They seed. just came back yesterday yeah. against Nevada. Um, Unreal. And then junior year we got we you got, got to, fired up. You lost to Dayton. We got yeah. <sighs> Yeah, they made a little run that year. They were good. And then my junior year, we got suspended. So we That's were not right. allowed to play in the ACC right. tournament or the NCAA tournament. We were a bubble team. Yeah. And what happened? Jim Beheim was taking money or something? It was uh, It was things that happened in, like, the 70s or what? 80s. What? Yeah. yeah, I remember telling people, I'm like, I'm like, um, can like, we just write I didn't, a check I didn't or get any money. Um, I'm, st- I'm getting <laughs> yeah. B's and C's. No, no one's doing my work. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, and then I I, I, I can't play in the ACC and still like tournament. I'm like, this, this whole sucks. program, yeah, whole program. When did you guys find out? Uh, we found out like we had probably like eight games left in the season. What? Yeah, it was brutal. It's unbelievable. That's so brutal. It was brutal. Uh, we had a meeting after a game, and uh, the coaches came in and were like, "Hey, um, we're gonna put like a self ban on us so that they they can't." Put like a two year, three year yeah. ban on us. Um, so we're not going to go to the NCAA tournament this year. And it was like really deflating. I mean, it's like yeah. all you, you you play for, you play for a chance, you play for an opportunity. Literally. Um, so, like, just to have those eight games and then end the season like that, it was it was, it was was really weird. Um, were, you, were you allowed to play ACC tournament? No. It's probably tough those last eight games, like mentally, too. Yeah, it was very like, weird. We, we had. Um, this is a safe space. I don't want to whatever get... you want about the NCAA. Uh, <laughs> go yeah, for it. it was. Um, <laughs> I mean, it was. I mean, it was bullshit, really, because yeah. like it was stuff that happened in like the seventies, eighties yeah. of like. Um, like this not even NCAA. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. It was weird. Um, but yeah, those eight games were tough. Uh, Rocky and Christmas, Philly guy. Yeah, I remember um, him. He was. He was our only senior. Yeah. Um, so it really, <gasps> it hurt. So it sucked. Yeah, him. it was really, really tough um, for him to go out that way. He had a great career up there. Um, but I, I was fortunate that it wasn't because I redshirted. It wasn't yeah. my senior year. Um, so I had one more year. Um, what year did you redshirt? My freshman year. Freshman year. My freshman year. We um, we were really, really good. And I was either going to play if we were up 20 or down 20 with a couple minutes left. And yeah. um, you could see the writing on the wall. So I just kind of just practiced the whole year, didn't play. So I traded a year where I probably wouldn't have played at all for my senior year. My fifth year where, I mean, I played – 38 minutes a game, basically. So um, it was a it was a good trade, and I do it all over again. I know. Yeah, tell me about that roster your freshman year. You had like, did you have like William, like Michael yeah, Carter so, Williams um, on that team? So I, I came in with it was me, Michael Carter Williams, and Rocky Christmas. Uh, Christmas. Both of those guys were all Americans. Um, Who's the guy with the headband? The lefty. C, CJ Fair. Fair. He was a year or two older than me. Um, but my freshman year and, and my Carl Williams freshman year, I mean, dude was rookie of the year in the it's NBA. Um, he barely played that year. So, I mean, wow. we had we had Deion Waiters. What year did you guys you had Deion Waiters? Of 2011. Oh. All right. So, we're, 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 we're the same age. So, your first year was 2012, 2013, and yep. you graduated that year? Okay, cool, cool. Yep. I'm pulling up this roster now. Um, it was just uh, yeah. Wow. And so Deion Waiters was supposed to be one and done at Syracuse, and he and he, and he wasn't. So he came back his sophomore year, um, which held up the younger guys that were there. Yeah, but it 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 worked out for uh, for everyone. It was good. And then when did was it Tyler Ennis? Tyler Ennis was sophomore. Yeah, my sophomore year. He, he was he was younger than you. Yeah, got it. Yeah, and then got that it. was that was the year where we we were twenty six and zero, beat the school record, oh, no one in the country for. I don't know how many weeks. Um, beat Duke that year at home. God, who was Duke. on Duke's team that year? That was um, was that Okafor? Wow, Jaleel Jaw. Yeah, yeah, that was that group. Jaw, Jer- Jeremy Grant. Is Jeremy Grant, 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 Grant yeah. too. He was yeah. a sixer, right? He was a sixer, sixer as well. Yeah. Trailblazer and, yeah. and whatever else. Wow. 
Love it. Yeah, yeah he's he he's the still he's the one guy that I played with that's still um, in the NBA. That's yeah getting contract. A lot of the other guys are still they're overseas. Unbelievable. Um, MCW is not in the league anymore. No, ah, uh, he might still have a contract with Orlando. I don't know. He's been hurt. He's been hurt a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 There's internet connections here. Terrible at the <laughs> office. Yeah, yeah. I'm just stuck right, on Jeremy roll. Grant's page. Stuck on. <laughs> let's roll into it. Let's roll into it. What do we got, Toots? We're in the we're in the best month of the year right now. Tell me, like, what excites you for this March Madness tournament? Who do you think? Who do you have win it all? Do you still Bracket follow college hoops? Yes. You follow college yeah, hoops. I still very yeah. much follow yeah. college hoops. Um, I love college basketball. It's I mean, I yeah. think mm-hmm. it's um, the new rules or the new landscape of college sports is it's very different now. Um, so it is, it's tough sometimes following it and what's going on with people transferring yeah. and, and all that stuff. But, yeah, the portal is um, wild. But I mean, this time of the year is, is great. Um, and just the beauty of college basketball to where it's, um, I know I, I would say like, the best team does not win. No, it's it's the it's the be, it's the team that's the best for two hours yep. for that for that night for that day, um, and that's all you need to be. Yeah, and you can basically beat everyone. Yeah. Um, I love the quote from uh, the guy from Oakland last night. Just what being, he said. He just said he's like, all these guys are going to the NBA. I'm not going to the NBA, but any given day I can compete with these guys. Yeah, yeah I, I mean it's that. more. It's my mom so me true. That he said, that. like in his interview, he was like, "Hey, Oakland, we're not a Cinderella team. Mic drop, just yeah. walked out." <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, that's, and that's the beauty of it. It's just like boy dropped seven sh- threes in the first half at thirty-two. Yeah. So I mean, you can, you can show up, you can compete with anyone, um, sure. and that's the beauty of it, really. I love it. I love it. Just talk me, talk me about this March. Talk me about like who do you have on it all? Any bracket busters? Who do you think is going far? Um, I got? mean, I'm basically in last. Um, <laughs> in, with the boys, you gotta. You gotta yeah, uh, yeah, I'm in last in, in the last this one. Um, basically in last. I think uh, I think I'm tied with Durham for last. That makes sense. It makes uh, sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I have Durham I have, has no hoops. I have <laughs> no Purdue way. winning it. I like Purdue. Um, yeah. I think they're due. Um, I, I like their team. They're older. They got some good guards. They got Edie, who's really big. Edie going out mm-hmm. on top. Um, yeah, and I mean, if if that dude can win a national championship, I think that puts him in uh, in talks for being one of the best college players of all time. I like it. I like it. Um, so I think they're due. And then uh, what? A couple of years ago, you had Virginia, who's yep. a one seed, lose to a sixteen seed, won the national championship the following year. You got Purdue, lost to a sixteen seed last year. They're one seed again this year. So we'll see if history repeats itself. History repeats itself. Um, that game would and uh, wa- watch them watch them lose to sixteen two again because <laughs> <laughs> if they played today, they haven't yeah. gone off yet. Um, man, that game when Virginia did the had their run when they played against Auburn was at the Final Four. Mm-hmm. That game was wild. No, that game was wild. It was wild. I had Auburn to win it all that year. I got a. Uh, I mean, like. I was telling you before, like UConn's just like oh, they're so good. They're so good. My so my cousins, fun fact, um, my cousins on my dad's side, the two youngest actually, they're sophomores at Villanova, played against Donovan Klingon his senior year. Okay. In the state semis, lost in overtime by two. Klingon had like thirty eight all from the free throw line because they just double team him and yeah. got him. And they were in, in no one else on his team. The guard, the guards on his team were trash. So they literally just tripled them mm-hmm. and you still got yeah. still got us. Yeah, UConn's good. They got everything. They got guards, the bigs. Shoot They're the good. ball. Yeah. I got I got Arizona though. I like Arizona. I don't know. Caleb Love. I like Caleb Love. Like, why not? Like, yeah, right? I don't know. I don't want to I kinda want to see the, that Arizona UNC matchup. hundred uh, percent. I think what would that be Elite Eight? Elite Eight. Yeah, Elite yeah. Eight. I kinda want to see that. Yeah. What's Arizona? Bear down. Is that their I think like slogan? Bear down yeah. or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I also want to see UConn Auburn. I don't cool. know if that's Elite Eight or Sweet Sixteen or what that is, but I know they're in the same same yeah. region. I'd love to see that. What about yourself? You got a uh, so, yeah, like, I don't know. My priorities have changed in life a little bit with two little ones. So sure. the, only bracket, that. Yeah, the only bracket I filled out was uh, stateside vodka for the Surfside <laughs> thing. Uh, Makes sense. I'm so upset. I, I won my mom's office pool when I was, like, 10 years old. So for 20 years, like, the guy always emails me, hey, dude, you're past champion. Like, like you want to get in? I'm always in. I, like, miss the email because my emails are outrageous these days. Um, so I'm upset about that. But uh, no, I, I'm I'm a big fan. Tuts and I were talking about it a little earlier. Um, uh, TCU Horn Frogs. So 
uh, Jameer Nelson Jr. Yeah. who went to my high school. Oh, I he school. transferred over. Mm-hmm. Yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. So I've been following. Uh, I grew up watching Jameer Nelson at Chester. Uh, my grandparents are Chester alums, and uh, Fred Pickett at Chester. I mean, he ran a phenomenal mm-hmm. basketball program there. Yeah, so. Yeah. Handful of NBA guys came out of Chester, uh, so I remember like vividly watching Jameer as a kid, and like watching his son is like wild now as mm-hmm. well too. Um, Jameer Senior also had a brother around my age, Mo Nelson. Um, so I, I grew up, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I grew up playing bunch football and yeah, basketball yeah. against Mo. Um, I think he'd shoot the ball. Yeah, 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 and like just gritty, tough guys. So. Um, I, I like watching Jameer Nelson Jr. play, um, and uh, so I'm I'm rolling with the Horn Frogs, baby. Nine I like seed. that. Jamie Nine Dixon seed. is yeah. the head coach there. He was at mm-hmm. Pitt forever, so I played nice. against Jamie a bunch, and he's a hell of a coach. So that's a good pick. I like yeah. that. It's nice. good. Yeah. They, I think they can win some games. Yeah, been following Jameer's career for a little bit. So he started at GW and they transferred mm-hmm. to UD. I enjoyed um, him in Delaware. I thought he was great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah we had a nice little one-two uh, Halford School punch there. Uh, Christian Ray. He went to Drexel mm-hmm. for like four years, or LaSalle. Excuse me. He went to LaSalle and then uh, transferred into Delaware. So love watching those two dudes. And then uh, yeah, like what we were talking about with the transfers and stuff. Just watching, you know. Yeah. Uh, like we were talking about as well too. Um, Pat Spencer. Uh, he played you lacrosse at Loyola. It's wild. It's wild. Yeah, mm-hmm. He played lacrosse at Loyola for four years. Won the Heisman. The, the mm-hmm. equivalent's called the Tewart, and won the Heisman, and then dunked it last night for the Warriors. Yeah, so, hey, he's been crushing the G League. Got the call up. Um, you know, shout out. Yeah, that's White Boy dream. Nation. That's the dream it. right there. Yeah, that call to, up. yeah, like I'm just gonna you go win to. a Heisman in lacrosse, but like, yeah, let's just go play with Steph Curry next week. Like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I, I like I like the Cinderella stories. I love it. Love it. Um, you know, pull up my heartstrings. So uh, yeah, I'm rolling with the Horn Frogs. Rolling with the local kids. So I like yeah, it. I like it. it. Yeah. Do you see Jameer Nelson? Uh, when I was, so he is is the GM of the Blue Coats, yep, and that's now right. they play at the Fieldhouse, right. and I was working down there. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I would see him a bunch down there. Nice. Yeah. Cool guy. Yes. Man. Very very cool guy. Yeah. Just like the like what like. I really love about that smaller guy, six foot. Maybe he's six foot. He's listed as six foot. Mm-hmm. He's probably like five eleven, five ten. That's mm-hmm. pretty but like, slow, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but like the longevity of that career. He was with the Magic forever, and mm-hmm. then uh, so finished good. up with the Mavs. Um, so like to play in the league for ten plus years. That's, oh, yeah. that's a feat. Mm-hmm. That's a feat. Um, yeah, so I'm rolling Horn Frogs. What do you got? Arizona. Arizona. Bear, Arizona. Down. Bear down. Bear down. Purdue. Purdue. Yeah. Purdue. I like it. Yeah, and I was talking hoops. Hoops. <laughs> I was talking hoops. Talking hoops. Yeah, but uh, getting into you, sir. Yeah, let's um, keep anything talking else on, Anything else on this March Madness? I'm good. I just what? freaking love madness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Best, yeah best love madness. Four days of the year for sure. It's just... We were talking about bringing in a second TV, but with YouTube TV, it cuts it in yeah, four now. It's cool, yeah. It's fantastic it's awesome. for football Sundays. I signed up to for like a, a deal last yesterday. <laughs> I need like the four screens. I'm not flipping. No way. <laughs> no. I'm not flipping. No, yeah. Yeah, but getting into our guest of the day. Um, dude, you have a Wikipedia page. Yeah, you. You're legit. How yeah. cool is that? My and mom probably made it. it but. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's awesome. Um, have you ever? Hey, when's the last time you looked at your Wikipedia page? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, because I'm gonna ask you. Because like, is there like fake things on there? You're, you're, no, dude, you're showing off a like bicep. Yeah. Wow. Dude, look at that bicep. And you had the hair like kind of spiked up. Yeah, like, yeah. You were the little shit. angry face. Yeah, yeah you were the angry face right there. You see the that? You were the shit. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I said a douchebag cut right there. That's just something it's, you only do in college. Right? Oh, yeah. Like you just you do yeah. it in college and then you just have it and then whatever. Yeah. 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 So what where do you go now? You go to DuPont Street Barbershop? Yes. Where'd you go growing up? Um I went to Docks in Hookesson. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. And how was it like because I, I, I did the same thing. I went and waited for school for two years and I had to find a barber down there. Like it it was interesting. How was that yeah. the process? Because this is quite the cut, dude. You're rocking. <laughs> Well, when I was at Syracuse, yeah, yeah. Um, basically, you find uh, um, other white guys, yeah, yeah. and just kind of ask them, like, "Yo, what, are you, uh, what did you get?" Yeah, like, you didn't ask the brothers, yeah, guy, guys on like the football team or like yeah, the other yeah. guys on the basketball team, like, "Yo, what do you get caught at?" Uh, Jerry McIver was the assistant coach there, so um, just asked him, and then he hooked me up with whoever he was going G-Mac. to, and they uh, their their place was called the Shop. Up, nice. in, up in yeah, Houston, there were, um, very similar to Dupont Street. Nice, um, some some cool guys in there. It's good uh, good time to hang out, and um, 
get your haircut just relax and chat yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I, I got my whole lacrosse team when i was at high point to uh go to my barber shop and my barber name was classic mm-hmm. guy looked like rick ross it was unbelievable mm-hmm. yeah first time i went in the shop i sat there for three hours and like it was like <laughs> yeah. my initiation into the shop yeah and then after that he's like hey man this is my number you can just text me next time i'll yeah. slide you in i was like thanks dude appreciate it <laughs> That was funny. That was funny. Um, I guess what, what, what I'm curious about is so, uh, like, question four here. So, um, not you are you are a big name in Delaware. Uh, like, what was your kind of like hoops upbringing? Did you play any other sports growing up? Like, I played every sport growing up. Um, so I have an older brother, older sister. Um, so I basically just followed them around. Mm-hmm. My dad uh, coached little league. Um, was Pops a hooper? He no, no, he was a baseball guy. Oh, really? Um, but he's a big guy. Yeah, yeah and guy. Um, he coached basketball as well. Um, but I played played football, nice. uh, played baseball, um, played soccer for a little bit. Nice. Uh, but yeah, I, I played it all. And then uh, once I got to sixth grade, I kind of really wanted to focus on basketball. Um, sixth grade, was, you yeah. Know. It was something that I was just like, I really want to play in college. Nice. Um, and then I really wanted to play AAU. And then I, I played travel baseball and played, um, for Piedmont, we played All-Star. So Piedmont. that was basically my yep. my summer. Um, so then I had to try and convince my parents that um, I didn't really want to do that anymore or if we could add basketball in, if I could do both. Um, yeah. And then I was just kind of, at that time, just kind of became a little committed and obsessed with the sport um, wow. to try and make it to the next level, be good in high school, make varsity, and then have a chance to play in college. Where did you go to grade school? Uh, I went to, so I went to, I played at St. John's, went to St. John's for a little bit, and then nice. went to Centerville, played Centerville, and then and Centerville. then went to Sanford in eighth grade. Gotcha. Were you on varsity by eighth grade or no? Yes. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, well, we lost in the you. state finals. Damn to hell. Christiana. What? Dude, Scoot would go nuts hearing that. What? Yeah. He would love that. He My pops was a coach for yeah. Channel Football back yeah. in the day, and they were like, had a team. I think that would have been 2007, 2008. That's crazy. Like that. So, so what do you mean? You were at Pike Creek? Yes. Or what? Where? Pike Creek. Nice. Yeah. Love that. Love that. Um, and was like Sanford it? Like, where, where, where'd your brother and sister go? Did they go there? Uh, they, they, no, they went to uh, St. Elizabeth's. Um, but once I got to sixth grade, made that like, hey, I really want to focus on basketball. Um, then my dad was like, "All right, well, what's the best basketball school around?" And it was it was Sanford and San Waterman. Um, he he produced the, the most guys that went and played Division One, um, most state championships. That was kind of where you wanted to be, and yeah. it was it was obviously a great school, um, small classrooms. It, it fit me perfect. Um, so once I kind of looked there, it was kind of like, "All right, let's go there. That's that's a perfect fit for you." Um, and then we kind of went to them and said, "Hey, is Trevor good enough to play in eighth grade?" Um, and they thought I, I, I was, so wow. went there in eighth grade, played varsity, um, and you can do that if the schools are connecting. So wow. in the state of Delaware, which is pretty cool. You start eighth grade? Yes, I did. Wow. I did. You and my wife have that in common. Not starting, but playing varsity in eighth grade. Yeah. Just two superstars. It's impressive. Right? Absolutely. It's I would love to impressive. see if we could find like a picture of you two from like back in the day. <laughs> Or like something like some yeah. program with like you know I'm sure yeah, there it's it exists like yeah yeah because like our worlds crossed over so much because uh, we came down and played in a couple tournaments like we played in like a St Cornelius tournament in like Chad's four we played okay. an IHM tournament um, middle school hoops like yeah yeah and Mary Kate's like you have that shirt I'm like I do she's like <laughs> I have that shirt I'm like oh word yeah. awesome it's holiday yeah. tournaments um. Yeah, but that's sweet. That's sweet. Is so. Stan Waterman was was your high school coach. Yes. Is he still around? Uh, he's not. He's actually the head coach at Dell State. Oh, sweet. Dell State. Man, he uh, lives in my neighborhood. Is that your boy? Did yeah, we meet him boy. like our first week what? at the open house? Nah, right that's my other neighbor. But so neighbor. Stan lives in my neighborhood. Yeah. My parents. Okay. So I see him always out walking. He's got the best house in the neighborhood. He far. does. He yeah. has a great yeah. house. So Stan's a legend. He's, he's a, a legend. Yeah. So he's the head coach at Dell State now. Dell State just lost in their conference finals. Wow. Howard. And how really play? They were one game away. Nice. Yeah, how so, long has he been at Dell State? Like two, three uh, years. Right? This was he just uh, third year. Okay. Third year. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. And he turned that program around. They oh were, yeah. I mean, they were winning a couple games a like, year, a year, like five and thirty yeah. or something. Um, and he's gotten to this point now. Yeah, he's a legend. Coach, yeah, how he was played. He, how uh, was he like coaching you at Sanford and whatnot? He was awesome. So he was dean of students, athletic director there, head head coach of the basketball team. Uh, there was no escaping him, which was really good, especially <laughs> yeah. for me. Uh, yeah. 
because like if you got in trouble in school, he'd find you, oh, and man. then and then you'd hear it then, and then he'd get you again in practice, make you <laughs> ah, run more. That's literally what Gene said on the podcast. Yeah, yeah. A thousand kids at Sally's. 200 in the football program. He's the dean of discipline. Uh-huh. One out of five kids if they could get in trouble. They're a football player. Yeah, so that's without a doubt. Track yeah. down. No, I, I mean uh, people need that. I know I needed that. Uh, I mean I know a couple of guys I played with needed that. Um, it, it helps, to, and it kind of just forms a relationship yep. with with them and a trust with them as well. Yep. Um, but no, he's. Uh, I owe a lot to that guy. How would you like meet Stan? Like, did, did you guys know him prior to Stan? Oh yeah, Sanford. No, okay. I mean, if you're if you're in this area um, mm-hmm. and you follow hoops, like you you know who, you know who he is, yeah. and you want to play for him, and that's kind of what, and that's why everyone went to Stanford yeah. was you wanted to play for that guy um, just because mm-hmm. how great of a coach he was. He's a great guy. It's an honor to live in the same neighborhood as him, honestly. <laughs> yeah, I'm him up yet. 571 wins in high school. That's, That's unbelievable. Ten, oh, yeah. state, ten state titles, yeah. Or ten state championship games. Eight titles. Yeah, eight titles. How many, what years did you win? So I won my junior and senior year. So back balls, to back. Back to back. Who we beat? Um, we beat uh, Red Lion Red my Lions junior good. year. I, I no, actually sorry, remember sorry. YouTube clips of that. Beat Dover my junior year. Dover. Red Lion senior. my senior year. I Red remember Lion, the clips of that game. They brought in like all these players. They had like two twins that played, I think, in like the Ivy League. Wow. Um, Shout out Mr. Sills. Bring it in. He, I, yes, I forget right, right. his <laughs> last name. Uh, I mean, I forget his first name. Uh, it's Blackshear? No. This is when I need Ty Warrington. He knows everyone's names. Um, <laughs> But he was a defensive end. He played at Auburn and then played in the NFL for a little bit. Really? He was on the team. They had, um, I think, a cornerback that went to UConn. Wow. They did another defensive tackle. They went to Syracuse for oh football. My goodness. These guys, and these, this team was stacked. That was back in that game, right? Yeah. I remember Deion watching Jones hit a game winner. Unbelievable. To, to win the state finals. Unreal. I think it's like the... I think that was the second time that that happened in state history. That's unbelievable. Against you guys? No, 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 no. just, just for you guys. as a game winner to, to yeah, end yeah, the yeah. state finals. That was your senior year? Yeah, that was my senior year. Unbelievable. So you won junior and senior, lost freshman? Lost as eighth grader. As an eighth grader, a lot of freshman and sophomore. Uh, just made it. I think we got bounced in yeah, yeah. the second or third round. Gotcha. Something like that. It's one hell of a legacy there. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah, so like a couple like parallels there. So like playing in eighth grade, like – Sounds like you like grew up a ton, uh, you know, like high school kids at 18, you're a full grown man at 13, you can still be like a little boy. Yeah. Like, how was that? And like, also juxtapose that that's an SAT word for you, yeah, that's a Sanford huge. word. Yeah, I, put two things yeah. next to each other, like word. red shirting, like your freshman year mm-hmm. as well, too. Because, like, like I, I remember like going into like, you know, freshman year of college, like a lot of my classmates were like, you know, skinny, and you have that whole year to get accustomed mm-hmm. to like. The, it's a job playing in college. You and oh, I both doing that. Yeah, yeah. So like, how was that? Like, like that's two big like growing up periods. It was like two years for that eighth grade year and that freshman year of college. Yeah, how was that like experience? Um, from high school to college. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, like like eighth grade from eighth like, grade. So yeah, being I, like, all right, hey Trevor, like you want to come out for the basketball team? Like, start yeah. so I was I was I was pretty tall at, yeah. in eighth grade. I was probably around like five ten, um, and I had some good size to me. Um, and then I always, five ten is tall. I'm five mm-hmm. nine. <laughs> and then uh, I always played up. Like my my brother would take me to um, the Central Y, or we head out to like the Kennet Y, and we nice. play pickup games with grown men. Um, I we always played up in AAU, like just constantly always did that from like that sixth grade to eighth grade mm-hmm. year just yeah. to get ready. Um, and then it was tough. Like it, like I remember like my first summer league in like going so seventh grade going into eighth grade playing summer league with these guys, um, and it was tough. I bet it, it was really really tough, and you had to get used to just how physical the game is. You're yeah, you're yeah. playing against seventeen eighteen year old guys now. Like was was different, but guys um, with tattoos. Yes, but but no, I, I I wanted to be there, um, so I would just play as hard as I possibly could, um, awesome. just to kind of be on the court and get on the court. It's unbelievable. That's awesome. Scrapping, diving for loose balls, uh, anything. Yeah, love that. Anything. Uh, yeah. Love that. <laughs> you definitely left a legacy yeah. there. Yeah, and then so it sounds like eighth grade had a pretty solid team. Freshman sophomore year, eh, you know, decent squad, right? Yeah, we're pretty good. Yeah, we, yeah. Um, so Dion Jones. Mm-hmm. Ended up going to uh, he went to Towson and then transferred to Monmouth. Okay, and played there a great college career. Um, he came in 
with me my freshman year. So we were freshman years together. We were pretty good that year. And then he he left and went to Paul the Sixth in Virginia for his sophomore year. Okay. And then came back for his junior year. Got it. So that sophomore year we we weren't as good. But then we had other guys come in. Um, we had Khalid Hart. Um, where did Khalid go? Khalid went to Hartford. He had a great college career. Played Division One. Nice. Uh, Sabri Thompson played Division One. Oh, you so, played with Sabri? Yeah. Nice. So awesome. Sabri was there. Yeah, so yeah. We, we had some guys. Um, Anthony Mosley oh, yeah. was a he played eighth Delaware, grade or right? freshman. Yeah. yeah. Um, I recognize that when name. I was yeah. a senior. So he went on to play Division One. So we we had we had some really good guys. So we had some really good teams there. Um, and then all of us were there for that junior and senior it's year. Unbelievable. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we, we, we were a pretty talented um, group that we had. It was they were fun to play with, really. Such yeah. a squad. Yeah. Did you feel like a grown man? Like like there's such a such a like a maturity period that happens, you know, all right, cool. I'm no longer a sophomore, now I'm a junior, like, hey, this is our team now. Yeah. Right? I yeah. think um, once once junior year hit, um, I had they started to play well in AAU, started to pick up some offers. Um, three years under your belt. Yeah, and that's when I like really felt like, all right, like this is this is my team or yep. um, we're gonna win states or like, hey, this is our goal this year. Yep. If we don't get it, like we're we're supposed to win yeah. definitely. Mm-hmm. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. So one thing I am curious you, you mentioned about is like kind of that like offer recruiting process. So uh, like like with kind of like anything like the top dogs get recruited like like you obviously got recruited to syracuse sort of deal um so like how was that process like like when did that those like letters come in like like conversations start to happen and you're started like eighth grade yeah. so you really? were offered me as wow. an eighth grader shout out blue hens gotta keep yeah. it in state monte ross offered me as an eighth grade. ross i went to this basketball camp yeah. in the summer um, just trying to be like you and then, for, uh, and then after that, um, freshman year was when like um, LaSalle, St. Joe's, um, big five. Yes, those those started Schools. coming like locally around. Mm-hmm. And then yep. once that grew, then then you started hearing from the Villanovas, the Marylands. Did you get recruited from Nova? Yes. Damn. Yes. Yeah, so, love to have you. Um, <laughs> Villanova was different. They they didn't have the like. Um, I was a couple years too early in terms of like that. Um, right. Yeah, like when they were playing, they dude. had like Malik Waynes and yeah. um, Corey Fisher, and Corey those Fisher, types of those types of guards, and I'm yeah. like Scotty Reynolds. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> I, I, I don't, don't really, know. I don't really fit that system, <laughs> yeah. like type of a thing. And um, they kind of changed recruiting a little bit, yeah. um, and that next wave of guys were were similar to how I played more than those other guys so i think i would have fit in a little bit more yeah, yeah. um or nova would have been more of a choice for me but yeah. i think at that time it just this just didn't fit what what i yeah. was looking for yeah so like what drew you to like syracuse was it yeah like what was the nail on the call was it so I, basketball I, I, campus i always wanted to go like growing up i i loved college basketball i loved watching mm-hmm. kansas do yeah uh north carolina like i love yeah i love yeah. that like i love those programs mm-hmm. and the history um, and then once Syracuse started recruiting me, I went up to a game and they were playing Villanova. I think it was probably like 2009 or something like that. They had like 33 or 34,000 people at the in, Dome. At the yeah. dome. Yeah. Unreal. Um, and then I, I, right then I was just like, this is the place I want to be at. That's like this sick. is like, they love basketball up there. Yep. It's, it's a great program. It has the history. It has the coach with they the coach. Um, yeah. and they, they had a great pitch in terms of just like, Hey, we're going to bring in some other really good guys. Um, and you're going to have to, you're going to be a part of some really good teams. They never promised me like playing time, like how a couple other coaches or programs would. Mm-hmm. It was just strictly like, we're going to be really good. You're going to be a part of some really good teams. You work hard. You're going to have a chance type of a thing. I like that. Um, yeah. And that, and that's what I loved about it. Yeah. Like there, there was no promises. There was no nothing. I mean, I redshirted my freshman year. For sure. It doesn't happen that often. Yep. Um, so it was, and it was a long journey to to get there, and that's and that's kind of what I wanted. I didn't want to be like, hey, basketball's going to be in your hand from day one. You're going to be the man. Yeah. I, I wanted to be a part of a, a program with the history, um, and and it, it worked out. You want the journey? You want to put the work in? Yeah, absolutely. I love it. Yeah. So, like, who was recruiting you? Like, like when does Beheim come into the picture? Yeah. Assistants hit you up first. Like? Yeah. So Beheim, Beheim does it differently. Um, Beheim doesn't really have much to do with recruiting. Mm-hmm. Really, he um, all his assistants uh, basically from day one. Really, they all played for him. Um, so they kind of handled everything. Yeah. They know exactly what players they they're know looking guys for. Who can play yeah. Two three zone. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> um, 
So they he Bayham kind of lets them take control of it. And Mike Hopkins was the assistant. He played at Syracuse back in the '90s. Um, he's the head coach of Washington nice. University right now. Um, he he recruited me to to Syracuse, and then I got up there. I met Jerry McNamara, who nice. became an assistant when I got there. Um, but no, I just I love those guys. They, they kind of reminded me of like Coach Stan or my brother. Yeah. My brother mm-hmm. coached me in high school, um, and that kind of relationship and, and that kind of friendliness, um, competitiveness that that kind of comes out, and that's kind of what I was looking for, and I, and I found in those guys. That's awesome, dude. That's yeah, awesome. It's, yeah, that's yeah. so cool. Yeah, yeah, we mentioned it. How it's was so the cool. two three zone? Do you guys just like oh drill God, the two three right. zone all day? All like, practice. Four hours run of practice. Like man to man or what? So yeah. we actually we run man to man more in practice than we do the zone. Really? But we don't teach man to man. Didn't you guys do the two three zone like before? Like the the offense comes up on your side of the court, like you guys fist bump, yeah, or whatever you like. Lock hands yeah. real quick. I remember that. Yeah. Right? I you know, you no, you yeah. yeah. You were just tap the hands yeah. and then now it kind of gets right, you going. Hey, we're locked in. Yeah. I love that um, shit. I loved playing the two three zone. Yeah. Uh, I studied it and um, just became really good at it uh, in terms of playing angles. There's Absolutely. only so many passes you can make. Yeah, you yeah. can kind of bait people into um, throwing it one way and then covering the next option, and you get a deflection. Um, but I loved playing it. I really did. Um, but we wouldn't teach man to man. We played man to man in practice okay. every day, um, and that's what we we did. And, and obviously. Teams we played against were playing man to man. So when you're when you're running up and down as a scout team, that's what you're that's yeah. what you're doing. But we wouldn't teach it. So mm-hmm. there was no there was no like oh man they just made a couple threes in a row. Like why don't you guys play man next time down? It's like well no I, yeah, like no, no one, we, there's no mm-hmm. help side. There's no like rotation. Wow. Like no one would know what to do because when we play it in practice, it's like all right I'm gonna cover you. I'm, you're not gonna score type of yeah. thing. But like you're not worried about anything else behind you. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it was it was a lot a lot of fun to play, and it was a lot a lot of fun to play in March when you went into tournaments. For because sure. like if it was a quick turnaround and like that team has one day to prepare for the zone, yeah, yeah. it's difficult. And and the zone at Syracuse was really good because you have to recruit well out of it. So you have to bring in length. You right. have to yeah. have yeah. your your six foot eight, six foot nine on the wings, and then you have your seven footer in the paint. Like then it becomes really really tough mm-hmm. because you're taking away angles. You're, you're able to contest. Top left, top right. Uh, yeah, it's either one of those. Yeah, yeah. Sweet. Yeah, talk, I mean talking about that, like getting into like the March Madness aspect. Like, how cool was that? Like playing in those types of games and that atmosphere, especially like with those two Final Four runs. It was. It how, was like yeah. It was a lot. Were you playing fun. NFL stadiums? Yes. For those. That's yeah. crazy. Um, Where'd you so play? my my freshman year, it was in Atlanta. So we played in um, what's the Superdome, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we played in Atlanta. That was really fun. Um, and then. My senior year, I was I was starting. I was more involved with the team, um, but you you learn a lot about the production of everything. So like you're you're going to, to you're going to practice. You're going to shoot around. And so my senior year in 2016, it was in um, we were in San Antonio. No, no, not San Antonio. We were in Houston. Sorry, okay. we were playing in Houston in yep. the dome down there. Um, but you realize so basically they put the court right in the middle. Of the football of the field. field, and then surround everything mm-hmm. else. So when you're in there, the couple of days before, like they bring some people in for like shoot around, um, but there's not much. So like you're you're in this. There's a hundred thousand seats yeah. around. Like the it's backdrop, cold, cold. yeah, the backdrop is a mile <laughs> yeah. from the hoop. It's it's different. The sidelines down below. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, it's race court. Mm-hmm. It, it's very very different. But then like you're you're basically walking like a mile to like your locker room. Cause like that's oh where it is. Gosh, so you're hopping on golf carts to try and like oh get around gosh. there. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah, so it's, funny. Yeah, it's like, and then if you like sprint it, you're like winded by the time <laughs> you get to get to the court. So you gotta have a nice little jog. Just real mute to mean. Be <laughs> running out of the bullpen. Yeah, yeah. True. yeah. Um, that's so cool. That's wild. So super dope freshman year. Where was senior year? So senior year was in um, Houston. Oh, so that's uh, I forget I know, NRG like, or something yeah, like that. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, that's awesome. I'll say yeah. You guys had to have like a little leg up because like you already playing a dome. It, it helped. helped. Yeah, it helped yeah. with the with the backdrop of it. And what just is shooting. that setup though? You guys are like down one end, like how you yeah, guys do so, it, right? Yeah. So yeah. Um, the carrier dome, I think it's called something else now, but it, it's different because they put the court in the end zone. And then pool stands up from the other side to kind of really? make a stadium feeling of it. 
and then they can fit so many people because like of how it goes back backwards yeah so then you can just fit all those people they can't see a yeah, thing yeah i was about to say it's they gotta be so far cannot see a thing but mm -hmm. it beats being outside in syracuse new york it's during true. winter time yeah, so that's why you come to the games it's also true that's so sweet love that it's so sweet love that toast what do you got for me next yeah. um how yeah. is g-mac is he your boy or what yes he's my yeah. boy jerry max man uh, so so jerry mac uh was on the 03 team God. with Carmelo Anthony. He mm -hmm. was the point guard. So, so they were sweet. they were a freshman duo that won the national championship that year. Um, and then Jerry's like all time and like everything at Syracuse. Um, played a little bit in the NBA, played overseas for a little bit. And then when he got done, he came back to Syracuse um, where he was a um, – he was an assistant coach, um, and then he became an assistant coach when I got there. And um, I have a really, really good relationship with my, bro my older brother. He's eight years older than me. Um, trained me, coached me, everything um, when I was a kid. And we had a really, really cool relationship to where he could challenge me on the court. He could yeah. yell at me. At, he was a high school, my high school assistant. Um, yelled at me in practice, but then he <laughs> drove me home from from practice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then we became brothers, and yeah. it was just it was, a, it was a yeah, it was a fun fun relationship that that it's we amazing. created. Um, and I found that with Jerry awesome. to where he could say whatever to me on the basketball court, and then we could go we'll goof good. around yeah. afterwards. Um, we play golf during the summertime. That's awesome. Um, yeah, and, and th that that was special to me, and that was fun. Um, you FaceTime him right now, he's going to answer? Yeah, without that. <laughs> without That's like that. the same thing That's when I played 2 My yeah. dad and my brother coached yeah. me. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> no, but he, Competition he, wasn't as good, but... And then also, he was, he was great to have around because he was someone that played at Syracuse for four years. Yeah. He was on good teams. He was on average teams. Mm -hmm. They made the tournament, made some runs. That's so um, sweet. So you, you could go to him for anything. Yeah, yeah and he, he went through it as well. So it was fun to, to have a person like that around. Yeah. It's Who's amazing. the other Q's guy? I'm blanking on the name. I think it's Greg Paulus. Played basketball at Q's and then went and played quarterback at Duke. Reverse. Reverse. So he it? played he played three years at Duke. And then came to And Syracuse. then transferred to Syracuse. So he's from Syracuse, New York. Oh, okay, gotcha. Was yeah, a yeah. big time, obviously, basketball recruit. But then yeah. he was like top five in his class as a quarterback. Wow. But he was like, he was smaller. He was like six foot. So I, I think basketball might have been the Easy, best yeah. play for him. But then he played three years at Duke, had a great career, and then decided his last year he's just going to go play quarterback at Syracuse, <laughs> which is pretty wild. That's wild, dude. Um, and uh yeah yeah like that that that's just insane that's just insane to do that um yeah did you think does syracuse have a golf team you guys have a golf team or you're no. like, hey, maybe i'll go out for the golf team <laughs> <laughs> i always i always thought it was funny so i had some um i had some good buddies on the football team and i remember uh like junior year we, we didn't make the tournament or anything like that and oh, that's uh, right they were having their pro day oh yeah and then um i was like kidding with a couple of guys and they're like well you know anyone can really kind of go for the pro day <laughs> i'm like really yeah dude, dude, I'm, like, a 40. I'm like yeah i'm like i think i could have a good 40 time i could yeah. have a good third time what was your 40 time i don't know what Damn. it was but <laughs> back then it would have would have been decent 100%. and my vert would have been pretty good 100 yeah. going around catch a couple football <laughs> yeah bill belcher like, yeah who's Loved that guy it, dude. yeah who's that guy <laughs> Bill Belichick, good size only two. Next yeah. up for the birds, little yeah. slot, little slot receiver. But then I don't know if I can take a hit. Yeah, <laughs> dude, that, yeah. Yeah. I don't, you don't I, need like a yeah, Brian Dawkins come that body. Yeah, yeah, like that. We're good. We want to save our bodies. No, nah, that's funny. That <laughs> is that. funny. Talk yeah. to me about um, like post Syracuse getting into the league, um, NBA, G League, overseas. Give me that kind of whole. Um, so I kind of, I kind of knew like. Um, I wasn't an NBA player type of thing. I knew uh, overseas, if I wanted to continue to play, was going to be my option. Um, so I get down at Syracuse. I had a couple NBA uh, workouts, which was a lot I was of fun. Say, what did, yeah, what did to, you do f following? Like, yeah, did you get into those? Like, yeah. So I had probably like six to eight NBA workouts. Nice. Um, they bring in six what, players. What teams? What teams? Uh, looked at you. So I had uh, San Antonio, nice. uh, Utah, uh, Lakers, Sixers, Wizards. So you met all those coaches and yes. players, and um, so sweet. Who else? That might have been it. Yeah. it might, I might be missing a couple. Um, but it was fun. It was yeah. just a cool experience and a process to go through. Um, and then I was, I was hoping I could make a, uh, a summer league team. Yeah. Um, but didn't get a call for that. Um, and then uh, did you have an agent? Yes. Yep. I was with ASM Sports. Nice. Um, and then I uh, signed overseas. 
um, with a team in Spain. Um, my first year was uh, was tough. So I signed overseas on with a yearly team. Okay. Um, I didn't really have the resume to be on a yearly team. Really? Um, a lot of, like they the Americans that they get are all ex NBA guys. Um, so I, I just I just fresh off of a uh, yeah. Final Four run had a decent name to me with college. Um, so I signed with them for basically a couple months, um, and then they signed. So they had um, Shane Larkin. Yeah, I don't know if you guys from Miami. From Miami. Yeah. Um, so he spent uh, a decent amount of time in the NBA. He was on the team. That's sweet. And then I don't know if you guys remember Chase Budinger no. played in Arizona um, for college. Played for Minnesota. Okay. Um, in the NBA for a while, but anyway, they signed him. So in Spain, you're allowed to have two Americans. Okay. So I was a third American. Um, I wasn't going to play much. So they released me. I signed in Germany um, for a little bit, and the team in Germany was uh, just a bad fit. Like uh, yeah. team was in last place uh, when I got there. Halfway through the season, they just fired like the other five Americans that were there. It's a mess. Um, it's a so mess. then I was like the second wave that came in. I was there for like maybe two months. Oh. Um, I show up to practice one day and the point guard's not there anymore. And I was like, uh oh. It's a mess. Yeah, I went like the two days later. I got called in and got released. Damn. Uh, and then, then they brought in their next wave of people. So then I came home. Does the coach speak English? Uh, he's uh, he spoke decent English okay, in, yeah. in, uh, in in Germany. It's not like Liechtenstein. <laughs> no, but when they travel, you're done. Oh yeah, when they would go off, like it yeah. was just wild. Yeah, it's wild yeah. over there. Um, and even the Spanish coaches I had, I had some coaches that spoke great English and some yeah. coaches that spoke terrible English. Yeah, um, Damn. to where they're like calling another player over to translate to you what to do. Um, did they chirp you? They're like, dude, we're not running a two three zone over here. <laughs> <laughs> we're not slapping hands. Nah. No. Don't touch me. It was different, but uh Let's hoop. But yeah, no, I, I mean you, you play man to man growing yeah, up all the yeah, time. Yeah. But uh but no, I wish I wish we could play that. Wish we could play that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. Two three is fun. All right, so you you got back from Germany. So you got back from Germany, so um so basically I went to went to Europe in like August of that year. I came back to America in like January. Okay. Um, and then I was around in Wilmington for like a two weeks and then signed with the Long Island Nets. Nets, yeah. Um, and then that? I went and finished up the the season with them. So I was with them for like two or three months. How was that? Um, it was fun. It was cool. G, G League's uh, completely different. Like very, yeah. very different style of basketball than European basketball. Okay. Um, so it, it took some getting used to, um, but it, it was fun. Um, had a pretty good team, and then once that ended, um, I went back overseas the following season to play in Spain again. I feel like you had a good. Was it like a good like year. Yeah, or two? it was. You yeah, had, I was. Um, yeah, I was playing. Right. I was playing in the second division, Spain, which is pretty good. Awesome. Um, we had a really really good team. We ended up making the playoffs that year. Lost in like the semifinals. Um, and then I then I had the decision to make whether I was going to head back over there or not. Yeah, um, which was uh, which was tough. We just yeah decided to come back. Yeah, decided to come back. Hang out with me. Yeah, <laughs> at the field house. Absolutely. <laughs> Any chicks come to the games? Yeah, we had, there's good fans there. Yeah. How yeah. was it over there? Because I like, saw some so pictures like, nah, of like Jokic like yep. throwing up like some like crazy videos of like I don't know where he's oh, from Czech man. Republic or whatever like crazy videos Serbia. people going wild in the state like, Ser- Serbia yeah, like insane. Russia um, Turkey I mean even in like Italy Spain like you'll get some like yeah. it's kind of like that soccer environment over yeah, there sure. to where you have like, do they just keep it like to the country so like you said Spain league so like you were just in Spain playing yeah. other Spanish teams so, Germany just in Germany so over there yeah. they do they, they have each country has um, their first league their second league and then, um, and then they have European leagues as well. Mm-hmm. So, you, like just like soccer, you have your Champions League. Yeah. And basketball, you have your European League. Yeah. Uh, your what is it? Um, be be like yeah, your Champions League. Who's the dude on the Mavericks? What's his name? Luca. Luca. Yeah, did you yeah, play Luca when he was like fourteen? I actually did play Luca. <laughs> oh, actually, yeah. That's yeah, so we put that in the real. <laughs> yeah, I did play Luca. Luca That's was. Sweet. I guess he's been playing pro since he was like fourteen. He's so good. So he played for Real Madrid. Yeah. Did you guard him? No. Wow. Um, I so I got in that game a very little bit, 
But uh, but yeah, he was that's seventeen, just and perfect. he was oh, so he was so freaking good. Oh my gosh, that's sick. He was so good. I remember yeah. <clears throat> coming back to play in the G League, and um, this guy that was on my team was from France, and we got talking about how good Luca is, yeah. and, and like we're talking about this seventeen year old, and then guys on our Long Island team were like, "What? Like he would he would not be he he couldn't go to Duke right now and play yeah. star." Here we are, and like <laughs> me and this dude from from France are like, "Yeah, no, he would be the best." player in college basketball everyone's like nah, nah he wouldn't be i'm like the game's just different over there like this dude's playing against grown men yeah, right? yeah seriously yeah. he's playing against guys that spent five years in the nba that are now and he's over, caught over the, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah i'm like this like he would absolutely destroy a regular 17 18 year old kid yeah like he, i watched a sweet tiktok clip of like mark cuban talking about luca when they were like watching him and it's just like wow, yeah. Like, yeah to just different. like see that, yeah, just yeah. different. Um, but you could see that at that time that yeah. he was he was really really good. I love him. He's MVP race like every year. No, yeah. He just slows yeah. the game down. He's just so yeah. smooth, simple. With it. With it. So, so simple. what was the moment when you're like, this is it? Yeah, I'm done. It. So uh, <laughs> when I finished my second year over there, um, I was talking to my dad and my brother about going back over. I, I had some good offers for some teams, some some good offers from some teams in Spain, some in, yeah. some in Portugal, um, and sweet. it was like a level I wanted to get to over there, mm-hmm. where like you're playing that European mm-hmm. competition, you're playing against other teams in other countries. Um, but then I just like wasn't sure about going back over there. You're over there for like nine or ten months, um, and it's just a grind. It's yeah. just a crazy, crazy grind. You you play like one game a week, maybe. Really? Um, you two days every day. Um, oh, no. You have a couple off days, and and like it's like also like what do you do? Like as I was gonna say, like did you like it over there? Like I, I being it. away from family. So glad I did it. Stuff. So so glad I did it. But yeah. like there's only so many video games, TV shows, and movies <laughs> that you can actually yeah. watch. And hundred um, percent. And like my second year when I was over there, I was a little bit more comfortable, um, like going out and like interacting yeah. and like having those awkward moments where like you're trying to order food yeah. and you're like pulling up like uh, like the translation, translation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and you're like trying you know to, how like, to say quesadilla. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's and like, um, but no, I remember having some like awkward moments in like the grocery store where like. Like the lady's basically like, hey, like I don't. There's no barcode on this. Like, where'd you get it from? And I'm like, I didn't steal it. I swear I didn't steal oh, it. And no. like just awkward things. Just yeah, like yeah, trying yeah. just just to navigate the day um, That's crazy. and get around and just do normal things. That's crazy. But, I never uh, thought about that. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, my second year, I'm glad I, I went out and and I was okay being uncomfortable and okay figuring things out as they go. Um, and I had a way better experience. I got to see a bunch of other things that I wouldn't have instead of just like locking yourself 100%. in your apartment type of a thing um, but I'm really really glad I did it I mean I know I've talked to guys that, that played at my level in college that, that didn't do it that like totally Wish regret it now yeah. um, I, I did think I was going to do it for four or five years um, but I just at, at, the, at that time I just, I just didn't want to go back over and so I started looking for other jobs and um, always wanted to get into real estate for always sure. wanted to, to kind of make a career of that and so I remember talking to my brother and he was like, um, he was like, well, why don't you find out who works at this Ruccini polling group and see if you can talk to them. Like they're all over Warmington yeah, doing yeah. a bunch of different projects. And Sean Locke at the time worked for BPG. That's right, yeah. So I talked to Sean, he puts me in touch, um, reach out to their HR, uh, get something set up and um and then got an interview with uh rob Ruccini. and so uh, the, the character right to the top dog yeah so um, this clip's going to rob Ruccini, by the way so it's so, actually yeah. funny i was um i was playing in a golf outing i think it was the sally's school golf outing and mm-hmm. i was playing with my good buddy brand lewandowski and um Blue. his um his mom's boyfriend steve joyce his buddy was with him um his name's john and so start talking for a little bit just like this um playing overseas not sure if i want to go back not sure yeah. what i want to do i'm like well, my buddy sean works for bpg might try and reach out to that turns out this guy john was the quarterback at wilmington friends yeah. robert cheney was the running back nice so he's like you want to talk to robbie he's like i'll, I'll have you on the phone with robbie in two holes <laughs> two holes. So two holes later, he hands me his phone. I'm and looking you're, at him. You're it says, hired by the time. Says, says, says Rob Cheney. Holy shit. I'm like, hey Rob. hey Rob. He's like, oh, I've heard of you before. How's it going? Like, congrats on like playing in Syracuse and stuff. Um, he's like, oh, I heard you're looking for a job. Um, he's like, um, 
I'll send you the email to reach out to. We'll, we'll get you an interview. That's sweet. Just like that. Just like that. So, um, it's not what you know, it's who you know. It's yeah, true. absolutely. It Without is. a doubt it is. Um, so I geared like my resume towards like being a property manager, um, <laughs> which I went on their website, saw they were hiring that. So I uh, get my interview with him and he's like, um, we didn't talk about, we just talked about sports. Yeah. For yeah, like yeah. the first interview. I remember leaving an interview, I called my dad, he's like, how was it? I'm like, I have no idea. <laughs> I'm like, we, no we, I I'm like we, we just talked about, we talked about basically playing college sports. Like, yeah. cause Rob played football at Cornell. Um, nice, yeah. So we just talked about that. And then I got a second interview where he was like, basically throw your resume away. We have this field house and we want you to be a part of like the 76ers field house working there. Um, so I thought I was geared, I thought I was going to go into property, property management, management or go yeah, yeah, yeah. leasing or anything like yeah. that. And then talk about this new project. So I, I wanted to be a part of that. I just love that, the idea of it yeah. and I'm it's back sweet. In, yeah, I'm back in yeah. my community. It's so sweet. I'm starting my first job off like with a, like I have basketball and then a little bit yeah. of business surrounded yep. by it. I'm like, it's, it's a good, perfect good combination. Yeah, and then it kind of gets me the, in, in the door at, at this company PBJ. that I want to be with. Yep. Uh, so once that, that opportunity kind of presented itself, I was like, well, if I go back and, and play, I don't think I'm going to come back a year later, two years later, and, and have this, this, this same opportunity. Yeah. So I kind of, uh, it, and it was tough. Like, um, I mean, you work your whole life to, to get paid to play the game, and, and you finally do. Um, but I just at that moment I, w I was ready to to kind of move on with my life and get a job and and like kind of like settle down a little bit. Yeah, Rob has a way of like getting his way. Absolutely. Yeah, he's yeah. such an alpha. Absolutely. He's <laughs> such an alpha. He's in, yeah, he's wild. <laughs> I remember when I was interning for you and he'd come in and we'd have to get the lacrosse net set up just so we could blow off some steam. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Wait, just shoot the lacrosse just net? Shoot, yeah. Does he really? In it. Yeah. <laughs> so let's go get the lacrosse net. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he, he works out at the yeah. Titus like three times a week. Yeah. Yeah, he's insane. Yeah. He's insane. I tell it to his face. Yeah. 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 We've, we've, we've been on a call with Rob weekly for the past like three years. And... <laughs> He's such an alpha. He yelled at me a couple weeks ago. It was hilarious. I bet. Yeah, but he did. Yeah. Yeah. For everybody's information, there's no Verizon wireless that's coming to Market Street, Wilmington, Delaware. So. No Verizon. Not, yeah. yeah, not allowed. Not allowed. Not allowed. Yeah. Every now and then, like when he's popping off, I'll like put myself on mute and like let the office listen in on it. And I'm like, listen to this guy. Yeah. It's crazy. He's awesome. But yeah, I he love is. Rob. He's he's great. He's great. Um, yeah, chopped it up with my boy Goran down there as nice. well for a little bit, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Goran was there for a little bit. G Money, he's yeah. a character dude. Absolutely. Goran was a hooper. Um, yeah, back in the day. Found his way in the lacrosse world, but yeah. Yeah, played Maryland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stud. All American. Yeah, yeah all American. Um, well, work. Cool, cool, cool. So. You, you've now transitioned over, so property management. Anything sexy there? We don't have to stay there for a while if you want. You like your uh, job? Yeah. I like what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's, uh, I'm learning a lot. There's learning. a spot at the GG with your name on it yeah, when you're okay. ready for it. So. Um, yeah, yeah. Learn just kind of how buildings and, and properties are ran and Sweet. Um, dealing with tenants and dealing with um, financials. Uh, yeah. You're kind of involved in, in, in it all there. Um, but no, it, it's fun. It, yeah, it's yeah. fun. Anything you're most proud of in your, you know, real estate career so far? Um, passing the, the course. <laughs> yeah, that was that was tough. You had this guy nervous about the course. Yeah, we talked about it. We talked at Brandon's. Uh, Did you uh, pass on the first time? Course. No, no, yeah. He, this guy was so nervous. He's like, "Dude, Cooney did pass on his first time." I'm like, "Toots, it's a test." No, so we talked about it at Brandon's engagement. You're yeah. like, "No," and I'm like, "Dude, I am beat." <laughs> Dude, that thing <laughs> crushed so me. me. Crush me, yeah. and like I'm okay at test. I'm terrible. But that's ridiculous. Like, I'm terrible. Because like you would read it, and you're like, oh. there's two answers. To yeah, yeah. Question. Question. It's what's Could more red: one. the sky, grass, apple, strawberry. Yeah. And it's like what? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, two, two of those things are yeah, really the, red. <laughs> the first one, uh, I think I missed. Uh, one of the sections by like one or two questions yep. and I was like, oh man. Yeah. And then the second time I passed the national Mr. State by two. Oh and I was God. just like, then you go to your third one. You I don't know if you guys are going to your third Rick's. one. No, I went, on, I went to two. So it's I go two. to your third one, you're just taking the state and uh, I'm like, man, you if I pass. don't pass yeah. this, because I, I remember I just took the class and there's people in there being like, yeah, like I failed, I'm taking this thing again. You're like, I don't want to do that again. No, that's all I right. don't want to do this again. 99 um, hours again, hard pass. And then no. uh, passing that on, the, on that third time was, was I was pretty pumped. I was pretty what was your degree in college? Communications. Sweet. Perfect. 
perfect role Good there. Stuff. Yeah, Good right? stuff. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's kind of funny when you say like, communication. <laughs> yeah, sports management. Yeah, you're like, all right, cool. <laughs> you do anything with it? Nah, nah, I have no, no idea. idea. No, no idea. <laughs> no, yeah, I'm leadership. Yeah, sport college <laughs> dropout. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I'm, I'm perfect job. Perfect job. Leadership. Perfect job. Um, all right, cool. Yeah. So wrapping it up here, last couple things. Uh, I really love this question. We've been asking this to a lot of people, getting a lot of special answers. Yep. Um, who inspires Mr. Trevor Cooney? Oh, uh, definitely my my dad and my brother. Without a doubt. What's um, your brother's name? Matt. 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 Brian and Matt. Yes. Um, you can give them their flowers right now. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, both of them inspired me um, and just taught me a lot growing up. Um, like I remember, like my dad's in, in the mortgage game and has been in the mortgage game for forever. But like I remember being in the car with him at like seven, eight, and he's listening to the the tapes and CDs of, of different things of how the market's going. Yeah. And he was constantly learning. He was constantly growing. Um, Talk, how he talked to clients um, and just the work that he put in yep. to get to where he is, you, you saw that. So then you, you're like, all right, well, if you want to be good at something, this is what you got to do. Yep. Um, and my brother was the same exact way. Um, my brother's accountant. He took over it, my grandfather's business and, awesome. and grew that. Um, so And those guys were like that. From the get-go. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So those are, those are the things that I, I learned. Um, just the, the time and effort that you have to put into something to be good and, and you have to be consistent. Um, you have to uh, create a schedule and you have to, to, to do certain things um, to get to where you want to go. Yeah. Um, and, and those guys kind of taught me that at, at a young age, um, which was really, really valuable. Love that. Love it. Love that. Great That's answer. awesome. That's awesome. Um, and then uh, hopping into it, something that we're all very much connected with, uh, the three of us up here. Um, Chris Locke gives you your flowers all the time. He says, you know, hey, Trevor is like the one who kind of like came up with Literally. this idea. Yeah. So, um, you know, anything you want to say about SL24, Unlock the Light, Sean's house? Um, uh, I, absolutely. Um, it, being involved in this is just... Uh, so special like mm -hmm. um to where it started um and basically i know I, I i talked about it earlier in terms of like it's it's who you know type of a thing and here i am not not really sure what i want to do and it's like oh i think that company might be good hey sean sean helped me yeah. out type of a thing and then i get my job at the field house um it, and it was after sean passed and here I am, kind of, I have this facility. Um, I'm thinking of ideas to, or events to have there. And I'm like, no one, no one's doing anything for mental health, right? Mm -hmm. Like nothing. And so um, I reached out to, to Mr. Locke and was just kind of like, hey, I, I have this snippet of an idea um, if you would like to meet with me. And it took him some time yeah. to, to meet with me. Um, but then once we did, I was just like, hey, like, we have the Seven Sisters Fieldhouse now. Um, I would love to do an event, like bring back some schools, um, and maybe we can donate money to like a mental health um, thing and, and kind of do it in Sean's name. And then uh, the Locks are just an incredible, incredible family, they and um, they ran with this. And then to what it is now, like the the amount of time and effort that 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 family has put into this, and the amount of people that they've they've sh like saved um, is incredible. Um, to where now we have this house. Yeah. Um, now we have all different types of donations that are coming in. We have all different type of programs that are at this house. Um, and then we've started stuff at high schools. Like it's 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 incredible. It's um, yeah. And to where it is now is um, it, it's special. It really is. And Especially like, with the staff too. Yeah. Exactly. Zach Ryan. Oh man. Ange Coburn. They're just good people there. Yes. That we and, know we're gonna take care of that that safe space for someone like that to, to really grow <clears throat> yeah. um, and to be what it is you you need the right people yep. and you need some special people involved to, to have it to grow yeah. and people that like care yep. yeah. and those people that are there care yeah, we, we and found like, that. everyone can see it I mean what it's done for this community is it's just unbelievable. Un unbelievable the Unlocked Light Tournament is what six years running now six years and running how, how much did we raise this um, past year this past year I think was a, a big number big yeah, number I think it might have been like 600 it's unbelievable. Yeah, um, I think we've raised like one point, like oh, oh, a little over, like well over a million dollars um, over That's the last awesome. five years of running this tournament. That's awesome. Yeah, like literally, like just hearing that and like piecing everything together. Like I'm on this huge religious kick right now, and just like 
God's timing, like you coming back from Europe, mm-hmm. you know, total tragedy with Sean, but like you being in a place and a facility, like to, you know, come up with that idea. And like you said, you know, hey, how many people have been affected by mm-hmm. this uh, in a much more positive light um, where, you know, it's something that, you know, hey, we could have just chalked it up as mm-hmm. like, oh, th- that's super sad. But, um, dude, yeah, shout out to you, yeah, brother, for, uh, for going ahead and, and yeah. making that happen. That's awesome. Um, Love it. Yeah, that, 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 I, I literally got chills like yeah. like like hearing you just talk about that. That was wild. Um, all right, cool. So wrapping it up, last couple of things. So uh, we are neighbors. Um, <laughs> yeah, Lovering Ave's a little bit cooler than Gilpin Ave, but uh, <laughs> yeah, but I don't know about that one. <laughs> Ev's not that cool. Ev's yeah, exactly. not that cool. <laughs> I, I'm carrying the load I mean, for long. I got, I got, I I got Danny up. Tomchak on Gilpin with me. I mean, come on. I got little Brooksy there. I sure. tried to chirp, dude. Yeah, but yeah, I, th- I think Ab's dragging me down. Um, yeah, we love if Kate's around, she brings some. She brings yeah, some good, cookies good and some desserts. stuff like that. She thinks all day. Lovering is is pretty cool. Yeah. It is pretty cool. It is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, yeah. So you're in here. So uh, this is we're, we're we're calling this the final four of the 40 acres. So final four of the you know 40 acres Charlie Square area. So so, uh, rapid fire. Let's just you know fire them off. Number one, favorite coffee shop. I, I guess I would have to go with Bruja. Yeah. Bruja, love that, love that. Um, favorite happy hour spot. Um, so I'm a big Kid Chalene's person. Nice. Huge kids, kids head. Like, so I'm basically going to say Kid Chalene's for everything. Nice. 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 <laughs> Do you get the prime real estate? Uh, it the yes. chairs I try the bar if it's available. Yes. Well, the you back have to, yeah. oh my, can't beat it. You have to get yeah. there when the doors open. Yeah, I, I, kinda, I mean, I want them to have like better TVs by the bar, yeah. but then people would never leave. It's a little correct. Correct. They would yeah. never people would yeah. like, really never leave there. It's yeah. also true. Literally, first snowstorm of the year, I said, hey guys, we're not working. We're going to kids. Yeah. Yeah. We were there Down when the, the door chair. opened. Yeah, the chair size was great. Favorite food slash place to eat? Kitchelines. Kitchelines, yeah. Without a doubt. Oh, yeah. I mean, you can't beat anything on their menu. Seriously, I'm a huge fan of Kitchen Links. Kitchen <laughs> shout cheese out, I will shout out Kitchen Cheesesteak. It's pretty solid. Yeah, I, I love Kitch their cheese wings. Steak. Yeah, I'm a wings. Huge fan of their wings. They actually have a decent quesadilla yeah, too. Burgers, their brownie sundae. Oh, yeah. yeah sweet. They won Best Nachos of Trolley Trends. Um, best wings. That was a little controversial, though. Yeah, a lot of people in this office were not a fan of the nachos. What's, what's the next one? What? For, for nachos? I think Rooney's, was it? Is it Rooney's? Uh, I think we were trying to get uh, uh, who were we trying to get to win that? Grain, maybe? Yeah. Maybe grain grains. or like tap or Range somebody. Grains or fire. Range yeah. Fire. But dude, like when we were running that best of trial and just coming back around the summer, <laughs> the kids army is unbelievable, <laughs> dude. Like if it gets reposted, it hits kids army. Like, oh, yeah. All of a sudden it's dominating. Like yeah. four yeah. options and it's literally like eighty percent to like ten, <laughs> five, five. Like I, I've heard that like I mean, maybe maybe I'm, maybe it's going back like eight, ten years, but they used to just have like a neighborhood like tab to basically you lived around here and you kept a tab there. You came by weekly, monthly, what? or whatever, and you paid that. That's not surprised. Wow. That's so like, cool. That's awesome. Not surprised. Pat, Shout out your kid. sister. Yeah, we'll check with Jordan. We have a girl on our team who works at Kids Street, J Foy. Um, we'll see if she's an actual thing. And then final thing. So favorite activity, favorite thing to do, uh, chilling in the 40 acres. Um, so uh, I love Other my, than grabbing the clubs and going to do yeah, I was going to say golf. <laughs> so I live with my girlfriend, Alex, and um, we adopted a dog back in no, November. That's right. Nice. Yeah. So having a dog in this area is awesome. It's amazing. And just like the um, – different parks you can go to or different just walking in the neighborhoods Mm -hmm. around is just uh you you can see a lot there's a lot of history um and a lot of like fun things to just do um but i I definitely enjoy that i love it yeah my favorite thing that i see trevor cooney do is give my daughter a piece of candy on halloween and that was fun too (laughs) i'm glad that i was back i'm glad that people were out in a bunch of i'm like mary kate we're knocking up at trevor and alex she's like no we're not telling away i'm like no we're knocking up yeah i mean and what i was hearing i was hearing that like gilpin tree was absolutely killing it and then (laughs) lovering had no candy at all. Candy. Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't home. Yeah, I wasn't home. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I was out and about. Like, point. I think they turned the street lights off <laughs> on Auburn during Halloween. <laughs> Unfair to yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love the neighborhood cool. trip. Not very cool. To- <laughs> Big news, breaking news on the pod. <laughs> Bring news. Toots is moving back to the neighborhood. Yeah, nice. I'm coming back. What street are you going to be rapping? What 18, is it? Dude, I'm 18th on the Street. Ooh. Yeah, I'm like the real deal. Like, Fancy <laughs> boys. Fancy. 18th Street by Tower Hill. One bed, that's all I need. Just need to get back up here. That's where my life is. So. Oh, yeah. I'm excited. So I'll make sure to stop by Gilbert on uh, Halloween. Without that. Yeah. 100% <laughs> candy. Best candy bars. Best candy bars. Anything else you want to say? Um, 
I don't know. You guys got any more questions? No, this, was, this was a lot of fun. Good. I thank yeah, you yeah. guys. Sweet. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. And Mr. seriously, Tuna. thank you to that one guy who canceled so I was able to come on. <laughs> <laughs> it was Ty Warrington. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's on vacation. Kids on vacation all the he's time. He's on that vacation. He's on that vacation. <laughs> he's on that vacation. But uh, shout out Ty. Maybe you'll be in one of these seats uh, one of these days. <laughs> yeah. But uh, Trevor, thank you so much appreciate for the time. time. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Guys. Um, you're the man. And uh, yeah, dude. I'm definitely looking to play a lot more golf this year. So yeah, I hope yeah, to see yeah. you out there a bunch. Go right, to Syracuse. Yeah, what you're doing. Yes, yeah, yeah, I do. Let's please go, Orange, baby. Let's go, Orange. Please don't lose tonight. <laughs>